Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Nahamadullah ta'ala, wa nahasafiru ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa ahdahu la sharika lah. Nashadu anna sayyidina Muhammadan abduhu wa habibuhu wa rasuluh. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa zwajihi wa sabit tabi khulafan rashidin mahadin min ba'di. Uzamat ala tahkik, uzam ihwalamati khulafan rasul ala tahkik. Umar al-Mu'minin, Hazrat Abu Bakr, Umar Usman wa Ali, wa ala baka sabit tabin, ridwan Allah ta'ala alayhi majma'in. Ya ayuha al-Mu'min al-Hazirun, yataku Allah ta'ala, wa ta'inna Allah hama al-lazina taqwa al-lazina hum muhsinun. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya ima mursalin, Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Praise be to Allah who created the heavens and the earth and made the darkness and the light. Yet those who reject faith hold others as equal with their Lord. He it is who created you from clay and then decreed a stated term for you. And there in his presence another determined term. Yet you doubt within yourselves. He is Allah in the heavens and in the earth. He knows what you hide and what you reveal, and He knows what you earn. Sadaqallah lazim. May peace and blessings be upon the Prophet of Allah, Sayyidina Muhammad. Someone asked the Holy Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, how should we send salawat on you and the members of your family? For Allah has told us to send salawat to you. And the Holy Prophet ﷺ replied, Say, Ya Allah, send your mercy on Muhammad and the family of Muhammad, as you send your mercy on Ibrahim and the family of Ibrahim, for you are the most praiseworthy, the most glorious. O oh Allah, send your blessings upon Muhammad and the family of Muhammad ﷺ, as you sent your blessings on Ibrahim and the family of Ibrahim, for you are the most praiseworthy, the most glorious. May peace and blessings be upon our Holy Prophet and upon his family and upon his companions, and especially upon the four Khulafa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar Farooq, Hazrat Usman al-Ghani, and Hazrat Ali al-Murtaza, and all those who follow them until the last day. Ya Yuhal Mu'minun, don't have a doubt that the days that we're living in is the Ahir Zaman. And this is the worst time on the face of the earth Rasulullah prayed for us to his Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our protection. And protection was granted to this ummah except for one category. In Hadith Sharif, the Holy Prophet said, Indeed, Allah has gathered the earth for me until I saw its east and its west, and the kingdom of my nation will reach whatever has been gathered for me of it. And I have been given the two treasures, the red and the white. And I ask my Lord that he not destroy my nation with the widespread famine, and that he not give power to an outside enemy that will destroy them. My Lord said, Ya Muhammad wasalam, when I decree a matter, it cannot be opposed. I have granted you for your nation that I will not destroy them with a widespread famine and that I will not give power to an outside enemy that will destroy them even if those from the earth's every corner unites against them but your nation will ultimately kill one another and enslave one another once the sword is drawn inside my nation it will not be removed from them until the Judgment Day. That is the time that we are living in. We are the people who it is talking about. The Holy Prophet ﷺ took a promise from Allah to protect us from starvation and from destruction by our enemies. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, your nation is going to destroy itself. These are very heavy words. A man with understanding is going to check himself and ask, do I fit to this category? Our Shaykh, Sahib al-Saif, Shaykh Abdul Karim al-Kibrisiya Rabbani, Qadis al-Asir, is explaining this hadith further, saying, 
Allah promised the Holy Prophet, saying to him, I'm not punishing your nation that way, but your nation is going to be so disobedient. Your nation is going to be so disobedient when you are physically removed from them, they will turn back to their unbelief ways of lifestyle. They are going to run after the Yahudis and the Christians step by step, and they are going to invent a fire they are going to burn themselves with that fire. The flood of fire is going to happen to them. That flood of fire is about to happen. Those who are seeing us screaming and crying, saying, come back, turn around, whatever you are, leave your egoistic way of lifestyle, go to sajda, ask for forgiveness, you may find safety. There is no other safety. The flood of fire is about to happen. Mankind is running still wild just like the people of Nuh And this is going to take the whole globe. The whole world is going to sink in it. No safety. Safety only comes with those people that they are protected and they are holding tightly to the Prophet So the Prophet is saying to us, safety at that time is my Ahlul Bayt. Run to them. Be around them. They are like the ship of Nuh You are going to find safety. There is no other safety. If we take these words seriously, it is very serious. It is up to you if you take it seriously. Or if you are just putting it through one ear and bring it out to the other side. But whoever believes, whoever runs, whoever tries may find safety. Whoever doesn't believe, there is no safety to them. And everyone knows through their lives how much trouble they have in their life. The best ones today, yes, they have troubles in their life. What kind of servant is that? That you are going to be a servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keeping your five daily prayers. Keeping everything and non-stop having trouble 24 hours a day. Something is wrong somewhere. Something is wrong somewhere. Sit and think. The Holy Prophet is saying the believers today has to be better than yesterday. Tomorrow must be better than today. This is what the Holy Prophet is saying. Look at yourself. Your today, is it better than yesterday? Or are you complaining more today? You know what it is. Do you think that your tomorrow is going to be better than today? If you are a believer, then it has to be better has to be. Your connection has to be better with your Lord. Your connection has to be better with the Prophet ﷺ. Your connection has to be better with the Awliyaullah. That's where you find safety. That's where you find peace. There is no other peace. And the words of the friends of Allah, they speak the truth. Yes, tonight is a night to look for peace. Tonight is the holy night of Barat. The Holy Prophet said about this night, Jibra'il came to me on the night of mid Shaban and said to me, Ya Muhammad, raise your head to the heavens. I asked him, What night is this? And he replied, This is the night when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens 300 of the gates of mercy, forgiving all who do not make anything his partner. The only exceptions are those who practice sorcery or divination, are addicted to wine, or persist in usury and zina. These he does not forgive until they repent. At a quarter of the night, Jibrail came down and said, Ya Muhammad, raise your head. So I looked up and I saw the gates of paradise wide open. At the first gate, an angel was calling. Good news for those who bow down in worship this night. And the second gate, an angel was calling. Good news for those who prostrate themselves in worship this night. At the third gate, an angel was calling, good news for those who make du'as tonight. At the fourth gate, an angel was calling, 
Good news for those who make zikr this night. At the fifth, an angel was calling. Good news for those who weep this night from fear of Allah. And the sixth gate, an angel was calling. Good news for those who submit this night. At the seventh gate, an angel was calling. Will anyone ask that his request may be granted? At the eighth gate, an angel was calling. Will anyone seek forgiveness that he may be forgiven? I said, Ya Jibrail, how long will these gates remain open? He replied, from the beginning of the night until the break of dawn. Then he said, Ya Muhammad wasalam, tonight Allah has as many slaves freed from the fire as the number of woolly hairs on the flocks and herds of the tribe of Kalb. This is the night. But we have become so lost that we don't even know how to ask for forgiveness. We became so lost that we don't even know how to pick ourselves up from the dirty position that we are in, from the stubborn position that we are in, from the angry position that we are in. People think that you can commit every wrong action, every crime, and then they can sit for 10 minutes and there at night and make a hundred istaghfirullah and it is enough. First, we have to realize the wrong things that we have done. We have to put ourselves to account and realize the wrong things that we have done, not just to Allah, but also to His beloved one, also to the inheritors of the Prophet, also to the Ummat. We have to put those wrongs that we have done in front of us so we understand what we have done. We are trying to be believers. We cannot take anything lightly. Hazrat Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an. The one who served the Holy Prophet ﷺ in his house said, You people do things that you think are lighter than a strand of hair. But at the time of the Holy Prophet, we used to consider them to be from the deadly sins. Where are the Muslims today that will cry to Allah? Because we have angered him and his Prophet, the awliya Allah and the Ummat. Where are the Muslims who only cry for themselves and for this world? Everywhere. But today's Muslims became very arrogant also to say, that is between me and Allah, brother, just me and Allah. But Allah Jalla is saying in the Quran Karim, we did not send, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, we did not send any messenger except to be obeyed by permission of Allah. And if only when they were unjust to themselves, they had come to you, Ya Muhammad wasalam, If they had only come to you and asked Allah's forgiveness, and the Messenger had asked forgiveness for them, they would have found Allah forgiving, merciful. Sadaqallah alazim. This ayat cannot be any clearer. We want forgiveness. It is through the shafa'at of the Holy Prophet. It comes through the Holy Prophet ﷺ. There is no forgiveness without rahmat alil alameen. We are following a shaykh. Our forgiveness is with him because he is with the Holy Prophet. And the Holy Prophet ﷺ and his inheritors are calling out to us, telling us to come out from the mess that we are in. They are shaking us and screaming at us to wake up because the flood of fire is coming to us. That is a guarantee. Listen to the words of our Shaykh, Sahib al Sayyid, Shaykh Abdul Karim al Kibris, Ya Rabbani. He said in his last Barat Sohbat before he was veiled, he's saying, The last calls are calling from the skies. Something heavy is about to come down. Very heavy. Not heavy, never happened before. 
Don't say to me tomorrow, some people writing to me tomorrow, Sheh, Prophet says, give the good news, make people happy. Don't say that to me now. Keep it to yourself. I know that better than you. But you are falling completely so heedless that when a man is ready to freeze, to die in snow, what you do to that one? You have to kick him. You have to push him. You have to move him. You have to cut him if it's necessary to feel that. Yes, you cannot just say, come on my shoulder and let me carry you. You cannot anymore. His inside organs are already ready to freeze. You have to make him to move. You have to push him to move. You cannot carry him anymore on your back. You understand? I'm seeing some heads, they are not liking what I'm saying. I don't care if you like. You don't know anything anyway. That man is not going to wake up because the freeze is taking the whole body now. You have to move. You have to move him upside down if it's necessary. Yes, you are going to hit his head to the wall if it's necessary. That's what's happened to the nation of Muhammad wasalam, right now. That's the time now. So wake up. A night like this, and you know more than me. You know more, better than me, that you are here now. And you know that 99% of your family members, where they are, including mine, you know where they are right now. Tonight is the night of Barat. It is the night of writing to the books and is coming down to the earth tonight. Whatever is going to happen from this Barat to next Barat, what is going to change from individual to governments, how much blood is going to fall down, how much of that is going to happen, who is going to die, who is going to live, who is going to born, how they're going to live, what they're going to do, every detail is coming down. Every detail is written down. Stop fooling yourselves. In every way, thinking that you know so much. Stop fooling yourselves. Doesn't matter who you are. Even the sheikhs in the awliya, they are sitting and thinking, sitting and watching what is coming, what is preparing. They are not bragging about it. They are not saying anything. They are just sitting and they are watching. Who gives news from the unknown? It's only the prophets. Nobody else. And awliya who is connecting themselves to the prophet. As much as is necessary to open to them, they will open to them that much. And they will see that much. And they will know that much. Wake up. Please wake up. Please, for yourself, wake up. For your own good. Please wake up. If you are good for yourself, you may be good for your children. You may be good for your loved ones. If you are not good to yourself, you are not going to be able to reach to anywhere because you cannot reach to yourself that time. These are the words of the awliya. And those are the actions of an awliya. Anyone who is going to tell you that you are healthy while you are sick is a liar. And he is a murderer. And the awliya will cut you if necessary to cure your illness. Because the ego that we have inside of us, it is worse than a physical illness. That ego is destroying us and pulling us into this hellfire. And most are not even knowing what the ego is not believing. Fighting that ego is not just an exercise that you're putting in your head. Fighting that ego, it is a jihad, a struggle, the jihad of the nafs, the greater jihad. That is what we are here for. That is the effort that we have dedicated our lives to. Our shaykh is there reaching his hand out to us in this night. We should leave our arrogance and our stubbornness and take his hand again and renew our promise again. We are making dua with Shaykh Mawlana's dua for this night, saying, we ask forgiveness from Allah Almighty. May he let us make real tawbah. May he honor us with the honor of servanthood. May he honor us with his protection. May he never make us to be ashamed in front of people, nor in his presence. May He not make us ashamed in this world or in the hereafter by showing our bad deeds, bad habits. O oh, our Lord, cover us with Your name, as Satar. O oh, our Lord, send us the ones who will show us the honor of the Beloved. 
for the sake of this night. From your armies, send your armies that will destroy Shaitan's Sultanate on earth. Let us reach those days. You made us reach the worst days. Let us reach to the best days. Let us make servanthood with ikhlas. Let us make servanthood freely. Let us go around proudly saying we are Muslims. We shouldn't be lowly Muslims. May we be majestic Muslims. Our spiritual power is in Islam. Amin, amin, amin. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Lazim, lazim. La ilaha illa wa lahiru kaimu atubu lahi. La ilaha illa Allah wa la sharika lah. Lahul mulku wa hamdik. La ilaha illa Allah wa la sharika lah. Lahul mulku wa hamdik. Kum shayn kadir. La ilaha illa Allah wa la sharika lah. Lahul mulku wa hamdik. Kum shayn kadir. La ilaha illa Allah wa la sharika lah. Lahul mulku wa hamdik. Kum shayn kadir. La ilaha illa Allah wa la sharika lah. Lahul mulku wa hamdik. Kum shayn kadir. La ilaha illa Allah wa la sharika lah. Lahul mulku wa hamdik. Kum shayn kadir. La ilaha illa Allah wa la sharika lah. Lahul mulku wa hamdik. Kum shayn kadir. La ilaha illa Allah wa la sharika lah. Lahul mulku wa hamdik. Kum shayn kadir. La ilaha illa Allah wa la sharika lah. Lahul mulku wa hamdik. Kum shayn kadir. La ilaha illa Allah wa la sharika lah. Lahul mulku wa hamdik. Kum shayn kadir. La ilaha illa Allah wa la sharika lah. Lahul mulku wa hamdik. Kum shayn kadir. La ilaha illa Allah wa la sharika lah. Lahul mulku wa hamdik. Kum shayn kadir. La ilaha illa Allah wa la sharika lah. Lahul mulku wa hamdik. Kum shayn kadir. La ilaha illa Allah wa la sharika lah. Lahul mulku wa hamdik. Kum shayn kadir. La ilaha illa Allah wa la sharika lah. Lahul mulku wa hamdik. Kum shayn kadir. La ilaha illa Allah wa la sharika lah. Lahul mulku wa hamdik. Kum shayn kadir. La ilaha illa Allah wa la sharika lah. Lahul mulku wa hamdik. Kum shayn kadir. La ilaha illa Allah wa la sharika lah. Lahul mulku wa hamdik. Kum shayn kadir. La ilaha illa Allah wa la sharika lah. Lahul mulku wa hamdik. Kum shayn kadir. La ilaha illa Allah wa la sharika lah. Lahul mulku wa hamdik. Kum shayn kadir. La ilaha illa Allah wa la sharika lah. Lahul mulku wa hamdik. Kum shayn kadir. La ilaha illa Allah wa la sharika lah. Lahul mulku wa hamdik. Kum shayn kadir. La ilaha illa Allah wa la sharika lah. Lahul mulku wa hamdik. Kum shayn kadir. La ilaha illa Allah wa la sharika lah. Lahul mulku wa ham